cue into the mindset of the entrepreneur. Just to mention a few housekeeping items. In this session, we ask for all attendees to ensure your mics are muted, your volume speakers are turned up, and your cameras are turned off. This webinar will last approximately an hour and it is being recorded. A link to the webinar's recording will be shared with all participants as well as on our YouTube channel. We would love to hear what you all have to say. So if you have any questions, please type it in the chat box. We have a question and answer segment right after the presentation. So today's speakers are Mr. Sajid Hamid, SME and Family Business Advisor, Senior Lecturer at Custat, and Mrs. Karen Carabayo, Chief Entrepreneurial Development Officer at Netco. Presenting first will be Ms. Mrs. Karen Carabayo. Mrs. Carabayo has over 20 years experience in entrepreneurial and business development. She has a passion for changing dynamics and the empowerment of people. She is a certified financial advisor with a wealth of experience in developing, implementing growth strategies and in existing and new markets. Her expansive qualifications include a master in public administration, a bachelor in business management and certificates in credit risk management, compliance, risk and responsibilities, and of course, change leadership. We will then have Mr. Hamid. Mr. Hamid is an entrepreneurship educator. He lectures on entrepreneurship, family business management and marketing. He currently writes a column called Entrepreneurics in a leading local newspaper and has published over 200 articles that give advice to small and medium enterprises and also family business owners. He was rewarded for his efforts during by Scotia's in Scotia Bank in 2012. Mr. Hamid insists SME owners to grow their ventures through training and consultation. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration, a bus uh, MBA in General Management and a Master of Sciences in Business Psychology. He also has an advanced certificate in, in Family Business Advising and or it's from the Family Firm Institute. So, Let's invite Ms. Carabayo to begin. Ms. Carabayo, over to you. Karen, I think you have your mic off. Karen, you have your mic off. Ms. Carabayo seems to be having some technical difficulties, so we're going to give her one minute. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all are hearing me clearly now. Yes, On behalf we are. of the board of directors and management and staff, um, I welcome you all for our webinar on the mindset of an entrepreneur. So I'm going to share, I'm going to share, are you seeing my slide here? Okay, so we start off how I remind myself of an entrepreneur. Now, in the word entrepreneur, I mean, we have a number of persons who will say that they're entrepreneurs. And from our research, we have over 582 million persons in the world who are entrepreneurs. But exactly who or what or how do we find an entrepreneur? From, the time, from time to time, we'll hear words used a lot. I'm going to take a hustle. I have a small business. I'm going to make a change in local words that we use. But exactly how do we define an entrepreneur? And by our definition, we say that an entrepreneur takes the risk. Now, how much of us are willing to take the risk? And what exactly is the risk? Is it a calculated risk or is it that you just have no ch choice but to take a risk? Right. Um, the, and these are the kind of things that, that 
we we look at when we define in the word entrepreneur. Are you innovative? Are you creating new business? Do you are you coming with new ideas? Is your product or service unique? Are there processes, procedures that you have set up in place? Right? And these are the things that as entrepreneur we will look at to decide what is an entrepreneur. And in terms of that, as we identify an entrepreneur, we recognize that is, an, is a journey. It comes from being able to identify your, create your ideas. What exactly are the ideas that you want to put forward? Where did it come from? Did you identify a need for it? Did, did it just something that you wanted to do? Is it something that you feel passionate about? Did you sit down and put together your ideas in terms of what are the resources that you need to get it? get done? Will it be the um, assistance, financing assistance, the persons, to, the skill set that required the the, pers the resources in terms of capital insurance? Do you have the capital you need to borrow? Do you, are you capable of um, creating your records? So in terms of, or is it that someone else has something that you have seen and you want to add value to that particular idea? So a lot of these things tells us in terms of how we develop our our idea as an entrepreneur and how we innovate and critical to that is also in terms of developing that business plan so once you have that business plan in terms and we'll go, to, go into it a little more further how do we define our entrepreneur sometimes it comes from being maybe a hobby right or as this slide speaks to is this something that i want to put my full potential or my my full resources into or is it that I'm going to be is it a side income in that goal we meet a lot of persons who will come to us and say that they are entrepreneurs and they're interested in starting their own business and when and me come because we provide we provide business advisory training and financing and they will come in and say that they're looking for financing and sometimes it comes from a point where they may have started a particular project or someone have identified their skill sets in a particular area and they move from that being appreciated for that particular skill or, or product or service to saying i want to start a business and we will advise you on the number of areas that you need to put in place before you should start that particular business or before we could identify you as an entrepreneur. And there are areas where that there will be challenges from persons who might say that we may not be ready to give you, or Netco is maybe not, or, an, or even if it's not Netco, another financial institution may not be easily accepted. Why are you not giving me the money that I'm asking for? One of the things that any financial institution will be looking at is whether or not the person is credit worthy. So in Edgo, we may not force and say that you must have a business plan, but we will work with you through our business advisory support systems to help you develop the business plan. And these are things, there will be critical questions we will ask from you to make sure that you are ready. So we'll know whether or not it's something that you need to start at this point in time or not. So look at, looking at our side, we say, do you have the knowledge base? Or is it that you are hiring persons who have the knowledge capacity for the business? Where exactly, what, what is your intention? Is it something that you're looking for, a profitable organization? What are the structures you're putting in place in terms of your record keeping, your licensing for the, the, the area of, of product or service? What are the systems you are set? These will guide us in terms of your, ad, what your state of readiness for financial injection to your, to your business. At this time in Trinidad and Tobago, I mean, we have a situation where particularly a lot of persons either because of the global pandemic, are either unemployed or underemployed. And there and there is a need more than ever for them to now look for some other source of income. So that's where it comes from the term, the opportunity entrepreneurs and the necessity entrepreneurs. 
a necessity in shopping. You have one who, because of particular need, they would now decide. I will, I because of my need, I need to now start some sorts of income, and they may decide, may may some evaluation upon their skill set. What are these skills do I have that can be marketable? How do I identify the persons, the target, who will be interested in the use of my my skill set, my service? How do I position that for them? So there are a number of different questions you will have to ask yourself in terms of, and that requires in terms of doing your research to be able to identify whether the product or skill that you're offering is worthy and it, and it is profitable to achieve the set goals and targets that you would have laid out. And in that understanding the entrepreneurial mindset, we identify three types. There's the creator. And the creator is someone is full of enthusiasm has a specific product or idea. So that person is with that particular mindset has ideas for different types of companies. They're easily, they are not easily focused. And you, we will meet persons like that who will come into our organization and they have a whole set of ideas. I can do this, you know, somebody wants that and or I, I'm positive that this could work. And that is um, understanding the individuals and understanding where their skill set and where where, where network our business advisory and our training element comes in a lot is that where we will sit with with the individuals assess what the idea is trash it out let's let let's spell it out what are the resources how are you going to do that who where are you who are, who exactly are you targeting to to, um, to to receive your product or service what maybe you would have done a survey so once which is we we able to now trash out in terms of where do we take you from and then we can build on that particular idea from a person who has a creator mindset and determine whether or not this is where you need to go then there's those who are the operator this person is me is more organized right you we meet clients like that who, who when you, you you come in to for our service everything is structured Right. And what we need some, sometimes is a mixture of having both. You may find someone where there's a mixture of both the creator and the operator or even the builder, the person who takes the idea or product and builds a company around it. Or you might find persons who have where there's that, just that specific mindset alone. And where we are be able to identify the weak areas from assessment, then we are now better able to place you in terms of what are the support services we can require for you. So we provide a number of training programs and will come from costing and pricing. Um, we have new year taxes. We have marketing programs. Um, we div and our programs are not specific. It's not academically minded, but it's, it's basically on our, the experience we have in the industry. And we recognize and we tailor made our programs specifically to work with the entrepreneurs to get them where they need to be. Now, one of the things I always say in terms of, you know, when you have something in your mind, you have an idea, you, you want to do something, and sometimes we dilly-dally, we procrastinate, sometimes we just have to get it done. So we move, so they, they always say the critical ingredient is getting your, getting off your butt and doing something, right? It's not going to, it's not going to reach anywhere by thinking about it. So even in the Bible, it talks about the parables, about the three men who the, the businessman gave, his investments to when he asked them to work with it and two decided to invest it and multiply and one felt it was to keep it safe right but when the businessman came back and he looked at it and he said no he recognized that there was a need for he did not reward the person who just rest his skill sets rest investment without doing activating it to grow and that's what we're saying here if you have you have an idea right come 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 meet with us we will work with you and we will get you there in time through our services, whether it's training or with the business advisory. We recognize even more than ever too the importance of ecosystem. So sometimes, for instance, we might have our sole traders, and our sole trader recognizing that yes, they may have the skill set. Some may have the family support, um, but at the same time, we have to recognize whether or not the the what is this what is the support. Uh, is a support system 
where that there's someone who is able is the front of the business in terms of being able to find to contact the clients and um, keep the records is or the person who is actually doing the particular tool or providing the service initiative we have to look at what what is the environment and where we are our this week for GW the the theme for this year is education inclusion and ecosystems and particularly it is very fundamental to this time mainly because of if we look at our ecosystem right now as I mentioned earlier, the ecosystem is impacted by so many um, situations, mainly become because of the current pand pandemic. And even prior to that, we would have had a number of situations where the economic situation was impacted. So we look at it and say, what can we do to assist Netco being mandated to provide support services and working specifically in entrepreneurs. These, this is one of the programs that we are working with. We are providing the webinars. We are work, and we are working with our entrepreneurs to ensure that the, we can build on this ecosystem. And what sets us apart? What sets us apart from other such uh, financial institutions is that we are a holistic organization. You can go to a number of different organizations where financial institutions where they will provide financing. There will be those who would provide training. Nepo, on the other hand, provides all services for entrepreneurs. We provide loans. You can get up to 250,000 for first time borrowers and for, for repeat borrowers up to 500,000. I would have mentioned earlier our business advisory support and our business advisory support is very critical in terms of assessing your particular need, assessing where you are, evaluating you and working with you along the way. All our clients would benefit from advice even after the loan is given. So you could go to another organization where that you would have received financing and then you are, you are, you are pressed to ensure that your loan installments are made without the support required as an entrepreneur. In addition, I will also want to add that we are currently providing the Entrepreneur Development Relief Grant that we are giving to clients who are not only clients, for, for, for entrepreneurs who would have, have that need for that support. This slide here, it speaks to some of the programs that would have mentioned earlier. The costing and pricing, the record keeping and cash management. Actually, we had a record keeping and cash management November the 13th, that was just recently. We are having the cost and lawyer taxes on the 26th of November. So for those who have not registered as yet for that program, I look forward to seeing you registered. And, and we also offer specific programs for any organization that will need entrepreneurial training that we have not stated here. We have also a business accelerator program. Our business accelerator program is where we have been working specifically with tertiary organizations to help build entrepreneurs. We have recognized that we have a lot of persons who would have done entrepreneurial degrees and our other presenter from Costa will, will also speak on that. And persons would have done the entrepreneurial degree and have be, would have not been utilizing it to start the own entrepreneurship organization. They would have not proceeded to look for employment. Particularly to how the economy is going right now, we felt the need that go to work, work directly with the tertiary organizations to build those persons who have expressed an interest in entrepreneurship to get them where they need to be. But the recommendations for this pro program participants must come from the institution itself. These are some of our current promotions. We have recognized a need, particularly in some of our sectors, 
a lot of our certain sectors were more hard hit than others. But at the same time, the impact is, 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 is global. So we have some loan packages and our, all our loan packages include an entrepreneurial development package. And the entrepreneurial development package is the training and the advisory element of it. We note a lot of our clients in terms of coming for finance and especially the our sector at this point in time are hard hit in terms of what is the next step to do. What, how do I make my payments? What is the next business? Or how do I pivot my current business? How do I restructure it? And being able to do that, and that is why Netco being the organization mandated to work with entrepreneurs, we felt the need to, to include the entrepreneurial development area as part of our financing. So a person could benefit up to 36 months, a minimum of 50% collateral, for different loan packages, some from 15,000 to 30,000 packages. And depending on the sector you, you'll be in, will determine in terms of your, your financing need. So feel free to contact us as 821-5800, or you can email us at train.netco.gov.tt, or you can visit our Facebook page, our Twitter page, and we look forward to always hearing from you. This particular slide, if you look at it, it speaks more in terms of our entrepreneurial development package. And this is really, um, in terms of price, is, is phenomenal in terms of price. Where can you go and get benefit from tr entrepreneurial training at these prices? So we have our startup package, and, be, and mainly because we wanted to support entrepreneurs, all our prices were reduced to make it more beneficial for our clients. So based on the training program that you choose, you also can benefit from a business advisory at a startup package at $300. If it is you see more than one training program that you're interested in, you can choose the light package, which is two, two training packages, three, two training workshops, and one business advisory. The advanced package at $900, Three training workshops and two business advisory sessions. Now feel free at any point in time you can contact us and be part of it. Any day our intention is to build the entrepreneur as we go along because our intention is for success in your way. Our, we have we are located in five areas in Tobago at Glen Rose Carver, Tobago, in the north Queen's Park East Port of Spain, in the east Eastern Main Road, Tuna Punas, in Central, Southern Main Road, Chagonas, and in South, Independence Avenue, San Fernando. And like I said earlier too, you can contact us through, by calling us 8215800 or trainnetco.gov.tt. Connect with us, because we are supporting, sustaining, and succeeding your organization. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Kyle. What an enlightening presentation. I am sure the audience appreciates the information being shared today and what Netco offers, especially about your current promotion, the business boosting investment packages and the entrepreneurial development packages, which combines financing, business advisory and training services. We will now invite our second presenter. Mr. Hamid. Right, you, you hear me there? Yes, they are. Okay, right. I'm trying to see if I could pull up my, um, good afternoon everyone, pull up my, um, is it up? I can't see. I'm trying again. All right. Not as yet. All right, I'm going to try again. Tell me when it's up. It's supposed to be. Hmm. I'm not seeing it. No, not as yet. All right. Okay. Uh, well, you, you could put it up on your end. You, you still must have it on your end. Yes, we can. We put it up for you right, right. now. Right. Let, me, let me make one more try again. I'm seeing it here, but I'm not seeing it coming up. 
let's see what happens you know it's it says sharing is paused until you return to the shared window so i don't know what's happening so maybe you could you could you could bring it up yes you put it up on this side right it's okay sorry about that you have to stop sharing now for us to put it up all right so i'm going to stop sharing i don't know what happened here oh so we have our backup plan so that's good <laughs> yes so good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad you all could join us um, for the second part of the mindset of the entrepreneur. No, no, that, that, that's not it. That, that's um, internet one. Right. Now I'm supposed to have a screen in the back of me. For some reason, I can't get the screen up. But um, so that's my green screen, right? So we, today we're going to talk about um, uh, entrepreneurship from a different perspective. Um, we're going to talk mostly about um, who really is an entrepreneur? I'm going to talk about the good side of entrepreneurship, and there is a, I don't want to say a dark side, but there's a flip side to the, to the good side of an entrepreneur. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about two um, entrepreneurs who started their business, um, not in normal times, but in recession. So if you have doubts about whether you should be starting a business now or you should wait until the recession or the, the adversity is over, you may need to reconsider that, right? So how is my PowerPoint going now? Is it up, um, Crystal? I I believe so. Is it up? Yeah. Okay. I have seen one up here. Um, okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. This, this is um no. This is the previous one. This is um Karen's one. Inside the mindset of an entrepreneur. From what I'm seeing there, I think that's hers, right? <clears throat> yes. Right, so you want to pull our next one there. So. Yeah, we do. Let me see what you have. All right, yeah, that's it. I was that's sweating there for a little you want to make it um, larger for me, please? <clears throat> and we can it's go. Full, it's full screen. Full screen, okay. Yeah. I can't control it from here, so you gotta go. You gotta give me the second slide. Sure. Right. Thank you. Right. So you're just gonna follow with me, right? Um. So so we're gonna talk about why you should choose entrepreneurship. You might say, well, I'm an employee. I work in. I'm I'm very happy. I mean, why should I take all this risk? And we'll talk about why you should do so. And then we'll talk about some of the things you gotta look uh, out for when you start a business, right? I'm assuming that you are going to start a business um, in this webinar. But of course, some of you may have a business already. So, but I'll offer some gems for you if you have a business and you're thinking about, about maybe growing the business. So we'll talk about the characteristics of an entrepreneur, which is inside their mindset. And we'll talk about how, as I said, two entrepreneurs built a business in a recession. Right, so we can get the next slide. All right. <clears throat> so some of you may know the first one is that when you're an entrepreneur, you can make, um, on, you have unlimited income potential. So I'm sure Bill Gates doesn't worry about, well, you know, today, I wonder if I could pay the electricity bill. It just came. I'm sure he never thinks about things like that. I'm sure he doesn't wonder about, you know, there's a new Ferrari out, you know, I have a red and then get a white. You know, he doesn't concern himself about that. Second one, <clears throat> you live your true potential. Now, Wendy Rahamat, for example, she is a, a food entrepreneur. And I'm sure she's she has a lot of fun doing what she's doing. And um, you know, if she was working for a company, she probably couldn't do what she's doing right now. And the third thing you could do is that you could give back to society. And we know a lot of entrepreneurs do give back to society. Uh, we had the, the Park One Singh family. I think they donated $5 million to UWI to do diabetics research. Uh, we know Arthur Lockjack gave $20 million to the Institute of Business and it changed the name to the Arthur Lockjack Graduate School of Business, now the Global School of Business. So they did quite nicely and they changed their name for 20 million. I would do the same too. Um, <clears throat> you could also change the world in a profound way. And if you think about a famous entrepreneur like um, Elon Musk, um, Elon Musk is, uh, is, is attempting to make, um, um, or should I say clean cars, right with his electric vehicles all right so crystal got ahead of me a little bit there so we'll talk about this one now so entrepreneurs has a dark side which which is not to discourage you but you should consider these uh, four issues when you get into when you make the leap into entrepreneurship 
Um, one is that you have to work long hours, especially when you just started. Don't think you're going to stay there and work five hours for the day. A friend of mine started a business about 30 years ago and he told me that he had to sell on the road during the day and when he gets home around six o'clock, he take a shower, eat something and then he start to pick his goods and, and pack it out in his car and um, he would um, um, work until 10 in the night and with a flambeau and his mother would tell him, boy, you, you know, you could lose your eyesight and all that. Today he has a huge business. He's probably the largest importer of plumbing supplies and, and automotive supplies. He also does too. And he um, he doesn't he tell me he doesn't work that hard anymore. He works 30 hours a week because he could hire people. So initially you have to work very long hours. Of course, with the long hours comes a lot of stress and discouragement. Remember when you start a business, all the the box stops by you, as they say. You cannot um, say, well, it's employees to be blamed because the bank is going to come at you and say, well, you know, you couldn't do this and you couldn't do that and you couldn't make your payments and that sort of thing. So it stresses on you. Then the third one is that, excuse me, you could lose all your investment, right? Um, we all know this that some entrepreneurs they, they they put a lot into their business and things doesn't turn out the way they want so they they, they lose they lose a lot of their money um, also you could end up earning money but not too much money right i mean you you, you probably as they like to say you're working for the bank right and the fourth one is that you may want to you may suffer because of the stress and the discouragement you may suffer health issues and the long hours you work so my advice to entrepreneurs is that make sure you balance your life. So work hard, right? Learn how to manage stress, develop resilience. Resilience means the ability to bounce back. Always have a positive mindset. If you have a negative mindset, you just wouldn't see things. All right, so Crystal, you can mind go to the second, the next slide, sorry, the fifth slide. Okay. So in, I, I come from an academic background, but of course I have a practical background too because I have a business and the, the, the genre of, of, of entrepreneurship basically says, the discipline of entrepreneurship says that they're not really sure about who really is the entrepreneur, but I don't get myself too much involved in that. What I'm saying is that entrepreneurs, one thing that, uh, and, and Karen spoke about this, is that they, they create value by being innovative. So they bring something new to the world. A business person is different from entrepreneur. If you choose to be a, a business person, you can make money, no problem. To me, a business person is someone who makes doubles, right? Uh, nothing is wrong with making doubles. People make a good living. But an entrepreneur would say, you know, they're selling people a heart attack, you know, uh, and that isn't good. Uh, maybe we should come up with something that makes doubles healthy. Now, I don't know how we could do it. Maybe you have to attack the bar. I think China is okay. And that person will be an entrepreneur. Of course, another problem with doubles is that doubles is made one bar at a time, right? And um, the problem with that is that it is not... It, it's not mass produced. So if you could come up with a factory system of making doubles cheaper, that would unleash a lot of value through innovation. Just like Henry Ford, everybody were making one car at a time and he came up with the moving production line, which you could see at your, your local subway, you see how the sandwich moves from, from one sandwich artist to the next to the cashier, right? So so that, that that's basically the difference in a nutshell. All right, could go to the next slide, please. Right, so if you were to drill down into the, the the mindset of the entrepreneurs, a couple of things you would see, right? You would see one is that they are, but well, you would actually see this, you know, doing an MRI scan. But you you would one is that they, they are calculated risk takers, uh, and calculated risk takers mean that they are not high risk takers like gamblers. So you see them in the lotto line, you know, they're the high risk people. Then you have the low risk takers who just put a money bank and they get a one percent. I like to call them the one, the other one percenters. Not the rich one percent does, but if people get one percent on the money, they're somewhere in the middle, and I call that the Goldilocks um, um, zone in the continuum of risk taking. And what entrepreneurs do is that they don't take too much risk, and they try to to minimize the risk by using the resources that they have. So while Netco is willing to lend you money, if you're coming up with something new, probably you should not look. And I know the Netco people might like this. You should not look to borrow money immediately. Use the resources. Up. Maybe you have some savings. Maybe you have some equipment. You know, you could start a business out of home and test out and see if this business makes sense. And then now, when having found out 
that you will likes what you have, then you could say, well, I'm going to net code, right? Um, entrepreneurs are innovators. We spoke about that, right? And uh, they come up with new ways, new products, new processes, new business models like, like Jeff Bezos. Um, they're able to identify opportunities out there, but sometimes they could create new opportunities that never existed. Some of you may know about the Airbnb, which means bed and breakfast. Before the hotel industry, always, you, if you want a hotel, you, you go on, you know, on a website and you look for a hotel and you book. But if you want it's cheaper than 30 US a month at night, sorry, you could, um, you could, Airbnb will, will get people who have, who are outside the hotel industry and get their homes, they can rent a part of their homes or they have a spare room and you could get a place for less than 30 US a night. So they create an opportunity that didn't exist before. And the reason how they did that is that they found themselves in a problem in that they were looking for a place, I think in California, and they couldn't get, and they had to, they had to get one of these um, inflatable mattresses and, and rent a place and that sort of thing. So they, they kind of stumble upon that opportunity. Entrepreneurs also embrace uncertainty. Uncertainty tends to scare the human mind. For anybody who understands psychology, or you don't have to understand the psychology, is that uncertainty threatens our mind. But entrepreneurs say, wait a minute here, let me fog of war. Maybe something, there's something, some opportunity out there. Let me just experiment, which is the next point. Let's experiment and see how the world reacts to our ideas. So entrepreneurs look at the world um, like this is that the world is like the laboratory and they want to test and see what the world reacts to their idea. And they keep testing and testing and we'll talk about how they iterate in the next slide. Um, the last point is that they create better systems and ways of doing things like Jeff Bezos of Amazon. He has for, uh, originally, he, he found a better way to sell books and music. And of course, he decimated the, the music and the uh, book business in the United States. Right, so we could go to the next slide, Crystal. Thank you. <clears throat> Crystal. Only she's there. Crystal? Yes, yes, I am here. Right, Jeff, yeah. you want mine going to the next yep. slide? Next slide. Yeah, I, I thought I got frozen out. So if you have questions, you could um, you could put them in chat in the meantime, and, and maybe Crystal could tell me about them. Or we could address it now or at the end. So I want to tell you about um, moving away from being too academic. So there's there's two entrepreneurs that you probably heard of, market movers, Rachel Rennie and David Thomas. I took this picture a long time ago. I kind of like discovered them uh, when they were in infancy, and um, I, I I don't know how I found out. Maybe I was doing some work for YBTT, you business of Grand Tobago, and um, and I found out about them, and um, this was 2008 or 9 that just started. And I said, you know, they have a nice business. They were planning, they were actually at the infancy they planning to sell produce, fruits and vegetables online, right? So I just want to tell a little bit about them so you can go to the next slide. Crystal. Right. So before I tell you the story, let, let me tell you exactly how, at the start of sales, what is it entrepreneurs do? So they don't, first of all, they don't have a business plan. I, I know some people might disagree with that. They don't have it yet. So they don't have a plan because they're doing an experiment, right? So maybe they plan out the experiment. So okay, they have a little plan there, and they do something called iterate. Now iterate, what it means is that you have an idea. Let's say you have an idea for Jira jerk chicken, right? So you take your barbecue pit, you know, buy one in price mark for five thousand dollars, and you go outside your your house or maybe a neighbor's house or whatever, and they, they allow you to use a space, and you test the idea, and see if people like Jira jerk chicken. Right, you may find out that people didn't like the Jira jerk chicken itself, but they really like the Jira jerk chicken sauce. I don't know how that tastes. I just made that up, right? And you might say, you know what? I'm onto something here because you learn something unexpected. There was this guy who studied women, and he saw that that torn stockings, so he came up with this idea. Why don't I introduce a three-leg pantyhose so they have a spare? Of course, that didn't take off because we don't see any women using tree leg pantyhose anymore, right? Now, I want to tell you something about idea. We believe if you have an idea, you have everything in starting a business. Actually, you don't. Just a few there. Right? Ideas, I like to think you need a lot of ideas when you're starting a business because most of them are not good. When people ask me, do you have a good idea? I say, I have some, but I don't have good idea. Ideas to me are like frogs. You have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find a prince or princess in some cases, meaning that you have to go through a number of ideas before you find a business idea, one that could generate 
money, right? So I always want you to remember that so entrepreneurs don't commit a whole set of money to an unproven idea. They must test it out and do research and experiment and learn from it. Okay, Crystal, I could do another slide now. Right, so let me tell you story about market movers very quickly. Uh, we don't have much time. Um, so market movers, they, they, they started this online business selling produce. And, and how it started is that two, Rachel and, and David were working at uh, one of the banks. Uh, and other young people are having a fun time. And then they found out that people in the bank wanted stuff, fruits and, and, and vegetables and, and fish and all that. So they would go in their cars and they would tell them, fill out their form and they would come and deliver it to the um, to the bank, right? So they use the form system and, and the form system worked well because, you know, the bank, everything is a form, right? And that was going good. And then Risha left to study uh, to give New York or server. And um, every so often she would keep in contact with David. David, how things going? David wasn't doing so well. So she said, David, you want to go to the next slide? David, um, let, let's let's try something new here. Uh, Crystal, do you want to go to the next slide? Right. So she gave, this was 2008 around that time, right? And she said, David, why don't you do this? Um, why don't you sell on the phone? You know, we call upon people instead of you driving around to pick up orders and that sort of thing. And because David had tried also to sell in the market and you know, everybody's selling the market. So like everybody's selling doubles. So you want, they want to do something. And why don't you do things online? So when she came back, she said, David, you know, she came from the United States and people are buying stuff online. She says, let's go and start this business. So they tried in a, in a bare bones way, as I said. So they, 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 she used her credit card and she, and she built her own website, The Market Movers. And she went to YVTT and she got a loan. She didn't get, it, they didn't get the loan that they wanted. They got half as much because they wanted crates and stuff to put in the cars and they would load it up with produce. And they, they didn't get it. So that used, excuse me, plastic bags, right? And um, so they delivered and they started to deliver in the West because they couldn't go all over Trinidad. So that was a logistical uh, choice that they made and a good one. And things were going okay. You mind going to the next slide? Right. And um, customers were buying, but most Trinidad's weren't really the first one to catch on. They got some PR from the IDB that a newsletter is talking about about this company market movers and some foreigners say hey you know we like that but they wanted something different when they want seasoning they don't want um, um shadow penning and celery and sive alone they want other things they want rosemary they want basil and they wanted something strange like, like rabbit with the head on of course they were kind of puzzled by that one and they would ask when they were delivering you know eventually they get to know their customers very well and say why do you want the rabbit with the head on right and then the customers told them, it says, hey, you know what? Uh, we're not sure that uh, we are going to get a rabbit. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Trinidadians sometimes don't have a very good reputation. Now, I'm not talking about you all in the webinar. I'm talking about people outside of the webinar. So it's not you all, right? And uh, so then they said, oh, I didn't know it. And then they said, we don't want the head again, right? Now, things were starting to pick up and they were doing OK. And then the Great Recession started in 2008 and 2010. So they started in 2009. And then what happened, companies, international companies started to lay off a lot of their, their, their foreign workers and they lost about half of their market. You want to go to the next uh, slide? So they lost about half their customers. So the question is, what do you do? Half your customers go. So if you guessed it is that they looked for new markets. So they had to go after trainees and they said they're going after, you can walk next slide. They went, decided to go focus on the West. Now, they, really, they focus more on the West because the West is where the money is. Now, as an entrepreneur, you should ask yourself two main questions. Where is the money and how do I get to it, right? So they said they're going to focus on the West because a lot of professionals and entrepreneurs live there and they were time poor. They didn't like going to the market. The market is dirty. They sometimes don't even like to go to the supermarket and buy their produce. So they wanted convenience. They want to order from their homes and they had computers. Now they wanted a different kind of product. So market moves had to change uh, uh, some ways their business model and their strategy. People wanted more organic stuff. So they went out to people who had greenhouses, who had enclosed areas so that you don't have pests coming in. So they use uh, less pe pesticide and organic stuff. And they wanted specialty items like maybe yard, yard fall eggs, you know, the common fall eggs. And, and, and so, so they said, you know, that's great. 
So this is a shot of their, their, their website. So you go and check it on. If you notice that they have expanded way beyond the initial story I gave you, right? Right, so you can go to the next slide. Crystal, you can go to the next slide, right? So basically that's, that's their story is a, is a longer story, but I give you a, a short version of it as a trailer, of course. So um, I don't know if anybody have any questions. Anybody know this guy uh, by chance in the chat there? This is the guy called Bali. I consider him a troponier because um, while most hair, hair stylists struggle to charge a hundred dollars, he will charge you four hundred dollars just for a haircut, and uh, he has done very, very well. He's considered one of Trinidad's leading hair designers, hair stylists, sorry, and uh, maybe Karen went by him. Who knows? Um, or Crystal, right? I don't know. I think I All right, <laughs> you, did. you you went by him. Yes. <laughs> Okay, right, right. So I mean, there's a story about him, you know, maybe one day if we get some time that will ask me, I could tell you the story about him. All right, so that's that's my um, my presentation there. I don't know if um, Netco has any, how they want to handle this now. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, Chaja, uh, I, I like Chana too. <laughs> <laughs> you you like what? Greasy, you know, you don't keep it greasy or anything like that. It's fine. <laughs> right, okay. But it was such a wonderful presentation. The mindset of an entrepreneur is, is really indeed a mystery for many. You know, it's been long thought as a special skill or, you know, somewhat outrageous idea to become an entrepreneur. But now, you know, it's been so mainstay. And um, colleges like Clustard, we are so thankful that you all have entrepreneurship studies and business studies as a focal point in your curriculum. Could, could, so, could I just make a little yeah. pitch for, for Costart here? Um, in, in case anybody don't know, if you want to study, uh, I didn't know how yes, this opportunity. Yes, we will take the pitch. If you, you want right. to try, yeah, let but, me pitch for you. <laughs> but let me just tell you what, if what we you do. If you want so, quality entrepreneurial training, um, you can go to Costart. <laughs> right. So let me just tell you what we have. We're the first, first um, education institution that has a bachelor's in management and entrepreneurship first in the country, right? You would think a public institution wouldn't be innovative. Sometimes you say, that, well, you know, you know, they might have the same, we were different. And in all, of, all of our degrees actually in, in, um, in business, whether it be human resource or marketing or entrepreneurship, we teach um, entrepreneurship, of course, but we also teach family business. As you probably know, most businesses are family businesses, right? And people ask me sometimes, who are the one percenters? And you know, we always say it's the Syrians, right? But you know, who's the one percenters in Trinidad? It is the Bhagwan Singhs, the SM Jalil, the uh, Southern Sales people, the, the Matuks and the, the Abuds and, and the Sabgas. And they are all own one thing, a family business. So if you're going out there to start a business, kind of bring in your family, right? And this is one good way to make a lot of money. So, so, so we have all those degrees. And also to tell you that Costa has the lowest fees in the market. Nobody has the lowest fees like us. And of course, um, well, well, we, we, we don't have any, we, we, we admitting in January again. So you want to make sure you you get your applications early for January. Wonderful, wonderful. So we'll yes, take I, I, I am so excited. Uh, for for those young entrepreneurs who want to come to Kostak and learn about entrepreneurship. Um, I have a question coming in from Dr. Joseph Alexander, and uh, the person would like to know, can anyone be eligible for business advisory services? And if you do not have a loan with Netco, would, it, would you be accepted? And I think this, Karen, you can take this question. For persons who want to do advisory services, I would notice that was a number of persons being asked in that question in terms of our service. Do you have to come and take a loan with Netco to benefit from advisory? Do you have to come to take a loan from Netco to benefit from our training? And the answer is no. Our mandate is to help entrepreneurs. Therefore, it's not limited to those who do one particular service. We, all our services are open to anyone. We will work with you. We will guide you. We will assess you if you need business advisory, if you need business training. Or, and like I said earlier, if the program is not on our list, we will work and, and work with you to create the program to meet your need. Wow, yes. Ah, that's great to know. And Mr. Hamid, when is the best time to invest as an entrepreneur? Well, they have a saying the always the best time is now, right? Um, you, I mean, people are concerned about wh where where the economy is going, right? But entrepreneurs start business anytime, even in a recession, right? 
um, there was this famous saying by um, Charles Revlon. He started a business, Revlon from the cosmetics company. Uh, he started a business in not a recession, but he started in a depression, economic depression in the 1930s. And then they asked him, well, how could you sell anything, cosmetics in a depression? And he said he was selling hope. So, so he was selling hope and actually he was doing pretty well. Uh, you know, Willie's ice cream, I know he went into the business. He started selling premium ice cream, homemade ice cream in the um, 1980s, right? Actually, I had that idea to sell premium ice cream. Um, I, I experienced haagen when I was studying abroad. And I and my, told my parents about it because my mother's ice cream was very good. And they thought I was crazy to go on and you know, I studied marketing and I come back to try to sell ice cream. And they told me that was a very bad idea. And of course, when I went to Edinburgh, that's, that's where your, your network office is in Chagonas. Right there, I was by a friend and I heard Willis was bursting ice, bursting coconuts with a hammer. And I said, what is he doing? He says, he's selling ice cream. I said, my goodness. And he made a lot of money. Unfortunately, he went out of business later on. So I would think basically any time, but, but, but the important point is, timing is, I know is important, but you got to do your research, right? Because you don't want to, commit money and resources and you find out that you just didn't do proper research and it flops. So basically any time, but just do your research and experiment and stuff. Okay, wonderful. And so Karen, what type of businesses are the Netco loan to? Netco lends to all types of business. What I guess what we let you know is what we don't lend to. <laughs> so we would not lend to a gambling organization. We wouldn't lend to specific um, alcohol re retailers or wholesalers. But we will not. We lend to all from from events persons to retailers, to retail establishment to manufacturing establishments. You could just come in, visit us, and we will work with you. Okay, and I have another question for. Mr. Hammond, how do you develop an entrepreneurial mindset? No, that, that's a good good question, right? No, it wouldn't happen overnight because if you had to change, let's say you had to change your personality, could you do it in a day? You couldn't. So here's what I do, right? Um, I, 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 I practice every day, right? So every day, for example, I would ask myself um, and my wife would be there and I would ask her, for instance, you know, she would tell me she have a problem. I, I said, no, no, you don't have a problem. You got to find a solution to the problem. I look at the options that you have. So I try all kind of stuff in my backyard and all kind of experiments. Like I would see my neighbors, I'd observe them. They would buy in Karali. And I said, that Karali expensive. It's, yeah, boy, it's $5 a pound. I said, well, why don't you go Karali on your fence? And they didn't think about that because they see a fence as a way to keep out the dogs or maybe keep out the burglars. But I see a fence as, you know, as something that can bring in money for me. You know, I'm not selling it correctly, but it reduces my, 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 my expenditure. And I see a fence as something that should pay for itself. I built a home and people are happy with, with our mortgage, but I have a little 10 by 10 room, which is where I'm having this webinar right now. And this 10 by 10 room makes some money, not, not totally, make some money to pay the mortgage. So every day you're going to practice and try new things and get accustomed with failure and always ask yourself, what did I learn today? And always reflect on it before you go to bed or next thing early in the morning. So your mindset will slowly change and you will develop the neural connection that you see in psychology, where now you can see things differently from everybody and don't only see the bad news, see the good news. Yes, and you yeah. get that as an opportunity. Yes, Ms. Carvalho? I'm seeing a lot of questions coming in. I yes, want to talk this one. In fact, yes. I'm curious. Right, I just if one. I can give a summary quick on the entrepreneurial grant. So yes. we know a number of persons who are on our webinar have would have applied or maybe thinking about applying for the entrepreneurial relief grant, what we call the ERG. Right? Some who have not been contacted yet, please know that we have a number of persons, I mean, we um who have would have applied and every application is important to us. Right. We are busy, busy trying to ensure that we reach to each one of you. And as soon as we reach to your application, we will be contacted. But rest assured, once we have received it, we will be contacted. And I have another question coming in for Mr. Hamid. Uh, what advice would you give to an entrepreneur who is considering lowering their prices because of the responses of some of their clients? 
Right. Um, well, that's a good question. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I have the answer, but here's how I approach it. So when I am, I do training and consulting, so I would quote somebody, right? Now, it's not very hard for somebody to open a mouth and say your price is too is high. Now, here's how we could get around that. You could price based on what the competition is charging and say, well, look, if I'm doing a training workshop, let's say in developing the entrepreneurial mindset, and let's say I charge, I just make it as $10,000, and they say, well, your competitor is charging $12,000. So I'm in a little jam there, what do I do? So what first thing I try to do is that <clears throat> when people are comparing in their minds, they compare apples with apples, but if they compare your product, which is pomegranate, to apples, somebody else saying it becomes very difficult for them to, uh, to kind of um, compare them. So when you sell in a product, make sure it's so different, it's very difficult for them to compare to somebody else and, and and focus on what value you're creating for that person. So big clients, for example, they could pay more, but it doesn't stop them from asking for a discount, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. If you sell me two products, like the doubles people, they all have to sell at the same price, but let's say you had a healthy doubles, you could charge instead of $5, I don't know about doubles, I think you sell for $5, you could sell 6 or $7, right? So make sure you are not, you are differentiated, you're not a me too, um, person which would make you an entrepreneur. Okay, wonderful. I, 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 I want to add to that too. <laughs> yes, I keep, I keep talking about the doubles. I mean, even though it's after lunch. I want to add to that too. You know, you had mentioned Bali in your presentation. Um, here, your hairstyle by Bali. You know, I'm going to shake it a little bit. Um, but any day, sometimes pricing will be in terms of who you, you, you market your target. So a particular product or service may not may be priced to meet a particular target. So all that you have to look in terms of your, the packaging and, and the position of your particular product or service. Okay. And right, right, right. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about Bali. What he does is that, and if he changed up his interior, when you walk in there, you see pictures of Wendy Fitzwilliam and this Miss World and this Miss Universe. When you come in there, he changes your mindset. So you wouldn't come there and say, I, you know, it's like you're going for a haircut in, for $100 or something. You know you're going to pay more, right? First time my wife went there, the first thing I asked her, I said, here, this man, this man expensive. Eh? She said, don't, don't say anything. You'll know we from sure on us, you know, so I had to stay quiet, you know. <laughs> okay, Karen, I am asking someone wants to know. Um, do you lend to agricultural businesses or do you usually direct them to the ADB? Okay, all right, so maybe even when the question was asked earlier in terms of who do we lend to, and I said who we don't lend to, I should have included in terms of that, right? So we do not lend agriculture to agricultural, agriculture specifically, we will do agro-processors, right? So at any day, as a state company, we have to be mindful in terms of what the other organizations offer. So there's the Agricul Agricultural Development Bank. They will lend to, to the agricultural sector. We will do the agro-processors, and agro-processors being those who may be making products in the, 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 the after products from it, the spin-off hey. industry. Hey, wonderful. And we have a question coming in. Can entrepreneurship spirit be taught or is it the business practice that is taught? That's right. from Mr. Hamid. Right, so, so we, we had this debate, can entrepreneurship be taught, right, in the classroom? And, um, and, and that's an interesting question. That, that debate was settled about 15 years ago, right? Uh, but when I entered the field, I, I was too sure myself. But we don't teach at Costa. I can tell you what we do at Costa, right? So it's like training a pilot. If you put him in a classroom and tell him how you're going to fly the plane, that is only 20 or 30 percent of it. You've got to put him in a simulator and then you've got to put him in a plane. So let's say I'm right now teaching fundamentals of entrepreneurship. And how we teach it is that first we start with the mindset change. So I would go through a PowerPoint process like this and, and, and I would tell them they have to go and interview entrepreneurs so they get first hand what an entrepreneur is from going out in the real world and they will present that in class. So, and then what we will tell them is that you need a competent idea and we give them a framework where they come up with ideas and go through the ideas and come up with a, a, a good one, uh, what they feel they can launch, and then they'll write up a plan, a brief plan on how to do it. Um, before they use a, actually start a business, 
and and we don't we don't judge them on whether they make money or not. We expect them not to make any money, and they will do our beer bones business, and they'll come back and do our presentation in class. So what I'm saying is that it's a combination of academic work, but it's a, also a, 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 a part of it is where you go out there and you observe and you try and you experiment, and that is how we teach entrepreneurship at Costa. All right, so it's not. Yeah, practical experiences. It's, else you would you would just have something on a piece of paper. Okay, okay. And I have one coming in for Karen. And uh, any advice on the legal aspect of having a business? As well as, just I'm going to give you two at one time because we have so much, but I know we're going to take a couple more before we close. Um, what advice do you have for an entrepreneur who's starting a business not limited to one stream of income? Okay, all right. So I will go to the first one, that's the legal aspects. I would have loved if that person, because we had a, a training session and we also had a, a webinar on the legal aspects of business where we would have gone through that, right? But any day, I mean, there are various types of entrepreneurs in terms of what structure you want. You could decide to be registered as a sole trader and I recommend that everyone be registered. There's always a the fair factor of why I should get registered and thinking all the negative, oh, I don't want to do the legal thing of paying taxes and I don't want to, to, to let me any BIR know how much money I'm making, so I'm not going to open my bank account. And there's a number of things that limits an individual in terms of your, of your potential to grow, right? So if someone is coming to Netco, we will encourage you to register your business at first back first instance, either as a sole trader, partner, or you can decide as a limited company, right? And it will depend on terms of, you know, some of your resources, what type of business you're going into, and we will guide you on that, right? Some particular in businesses will depend, will, in terms of what contracts you want to do, it may be better to be a registered company as opposed to a sole trader because there's a, there, there, there are a number of legal ramifications for that. We're not in the position to go through all that right now, but we will have, um, we could, we'll, yet again, we'll have another training program on it. Once we have that deal set, we'll inform you, stay in contact on our Facebook page. In addition, you can always meet with our business advisor, depending on if it is your business has not registered or you're thinking about registering, and we will work with you in, in guidance to assist you with registration of your business. The other question was on, remind me again. The other question, was on the advice you will give to an entrepreneur who's starting a business uh, but has limited, uh, but is not limited to one stream of income. Right, not limited to one stream of income. Is that a person, I'm assuming that a person is employed and um, they have and they have a source of income there and they are looking for to start something else. That's, I'm thinking that's what they're going at. Right. What happens sometimes you will find where that a person is employed and so yes, one stream of income there and you're looking to start a business. If you do not depend on the type of business you are you're going to get into, you may not be able to um, be able to put your full potential on it unless you have the support. For instance, the, the new business that you're interested in requires X amount of hours, X amount of skills. X amount of time researching, marketing, contacting your clients. And sometimes when we, if we don't have the resource capacity in terms of the, 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 the physical capacity or the, the income capacity to manage that business, it impacts on what we want to do. So depending on if someone is coming as an individual and saying that I want to start three, four sets of business, we will want to guide you on exactly what is, what is your core competence, what, what exactly you want to do, and we'll work with you to build that before you try to, to engage in a number of other things. And all that will come through in terms of development of your business plan. Okay, okay. And uh, I just want to pass this question. We're going to take two more questions. This question coming to Mr. Hamid. When do you start paying yourself um, when you're operating a small business? Yeah, that, that's a good question. But most trend and instant to pay themselves very early, right? <laughs> so as soon as they start making money, they start to buy fancy cars and, and jewelry and they want to fly out. Now you've got to remember, at the early stage, your, your business is a cash sponge, right? 
even if you start and make money, don't get too excited, right? I tell people I have been excited many times before in my life and it just went flop, right? So you wait until the business is making money. In your mind, you should say at the early stages, maybe I should take 25% of the profit and put back 75% in the early stage, maybe more. I know entrepreneurs who would, for 10 years, they didn't take a, a substantial um, salary. In fact, some of the employees were looking for more money than them, right? Because they wanted the business to grow. Now, I'm not saying not to go to the network and borrow and put into the business, but why borrow when you could take the cash flow from the business and put it in? And when you need to grow and you don't have that, then you go to Netco or the bank and then you borrow. So try to be a miser and put back as much money into the business as possible. Live a, a basic life. And when you have gotten to that point where you can take now half the profit for yourself and half of the business and the business could continue to grow, uh, the business now will not be like a lifestyle business where you have a business just to wear the best clothes and that sort of thing, right? I have some shirts that going back 10 years. They are Ralph Lauren. Uh, the one I wear, my brother gave this to me, so I, I didn't have to um, buy it, you know? <laughs> so I would say, watch your, watch, your, watch your money, right? Especially at the early stage and uh, don't waste your money at all. If other people are spending and, go, and going to Miami and stuff and buying stuff on Amazon, you leave them alone and you put your money in your business. Wow. And this is the final question. This is the all the time we have for questions today. So it's going to Karen. And it is how can someone meet with a business advisor slash mentor? Um, falling on that is uh, do we provide links with mentors or people who are business owners? Okay, all right. So I'm going to try and answer three questions with one. So I saw people were asking about training. We have training programs coming up. We have the Know Your Taxes on November 26th, and we have the Digital Transformation December the 15th, right? Those two training workshops. In addition to, what's the question again? Uh, they want to know how they go about getting in contact. Okay. With contact Netco 8215800. Or you can email us at training at netcode.gov.tt. Um, simply in the email, send your name, your contact information, and what is the purpose of your request. So it could be as basic as saying, I'm interested in a training program, I'm interested in a loan, I'm interested in business advisory. Simply state that your information, and we would get back to you within 24 hours. Okay, okay, so wonderful. So on behalf of Netco and Custard, I want to give a big thank you to Mr. Hamid and Ms. Car Mrs. Carabayo. Our audience, you have been such a wonderful audience. We thank you so much for attending this special offering for Global Entrepreneurship Week. And we hope to see you back here tomorrow, where we will be throwing the ball over to our colleagues in the East Branch. Tomorrow we are heading to Sandy Grande for... <laughs> Sustainable growth in the college, the cottage industry I, of Trinidad and Tobago. And I want to add to Crystal that our minister, the Honorable Fitzgerald Hine, will be joining us on tomorrow's program. Yes, so wonderful. We look forward for those from right. He's opening our session, so we, you have to be registered early to I listen on him. He, he will right. be opening. <laughs> <laughs> so for the San Grande and the to Toco, Manzanilla, all those areas, Guayco. We welcome you all to be part of our session tomorrow as we focus from the shop. Yes, 12.30 shop. The minister will open the session. All right, and if you need further information, please feel free to email us at training at netco.gov.tt or call us as Karen said at 8215800. And we have five branches located throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And that's it for us. For today, thank you everyone. Thank you so much and have a great afternoon. A pleasure. Thank you all. All the best. Mm -hmm. Bye. Okay, bye. bye, -bye.